here's the deal. Uh, if you need to replace your thermostat on your Gen 2 Subaru 2.5 X, I am not talking about the turbo, and just the standard 2.5 X, uh, you might as well replace the hoses. Because if the thermostat is bad, then it's probably time for the hoses too. Have they gotten kind of mushy? Spend the money and go ahead and get the hoses that you need to replace. One upper, one lower. And the lower is a pain in the butt. And it's a pain in the butt to get to the thermostat uh, uh, housing bolts as well. And it's a pain in the butt trying to keep the coolant from splashing all over and splashing all over on you and everything else. So uh, that's what we'll be looking at today is uh, I'm just going to film bits and pieces and touch on a couple of things that I've seen in other videos that I think uh, warrant uh, uh, different advice. I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just saying that it's not the way I would do it and I'm pretty, pretty cautious about stuff because I don't like doing it more than once. I'm very much about not having to do something more than once and not cleaning properly, not disassembling properly, not preparing properly. It's going to cost you time. So, okay. As you can see under here, I've already removed the skid plate that I have. I have an aftermarket um, aluminum skid plate that I run under here. You are going to be running into a plastic or a fiberboard type of skid plate and that's okay. It's held together, well it's held on by four bolts. One, two, three, four and those are I believe a 12 millimeter head if you haven't changed out the bolts, which is something that I did, so anyways. But yeah, first step you want to do is get the car elevated. Second step you want to do is remove the skid plate. Third step you want to do is lay out all of your mess. Lay out your tablecloth and your napkins and everything that you're going to be needing while you're reaching up under here because everything is going to be being done on your back or on the side. This is our lower radiator hose and you can feel it's just squishy here on this side. Soft squishy, that is not good. It hooks in here and it hooks here to the thermostat housing. With all of that in mind, you may just want to go to a full service station. Full service repair or maintenance shop and have them do this for you. Thing is, you won't know if it's done right. And I've had, sorry to say, but I've had 25% of the work that I have had done at shops that I needed to redo because people are in too much of a hurry. I'm retired, I'm not, I get it. Go to a reputable Subaru dealer or a reputable Subaru mechanic to get this stuff done. Do not just go for the cheapest fix. Find somebody in your town that uh, is doing uh, side work, that is maybe a mechanic that does this just for some extra money, but has the knowledge and is not in a hurry. Um, affordable wrenches are some of the best mechanics that you'll find. Here's a look at uh, the parts you're going to need to do a thermostat replacement and a uh, hose replacement and a flush for your 06 Gen 2 Subaru Forester uh, X, not the XT, this is not the turbo. You're going to need Subaru coolant conditioner, you're going to need equivalent Original Equipment Technology Asian Vehicles for the Subaru uh, 06 Subaru. It is the green, but it needs to be for the Asian vehicles. You're going to need a thermostat. One of the things you want to make sure when you get your thermostat is that it has 
this gasket, it has this rubber seal, all right? That is very important. If it doesn't have it when you purchase it uh, from the parts stores, uh, order, order the rubber gasket to come along. And this allows you to hook this up to your radiator so that this works as a reservoir and allows you to burp, get rid of the air bubbles, burp your, uh, your radiator coolants. Three of these, distilled water, distilled water. The reason you need uh, the reason you need distilled water when you're doing this project is that the aluminum uh, blocks and uh, their components are very susceptible to contamination of minerals that are in regular water. The distilled water has removed much of that mineral content. Uh, don't use tap water. Don't use hose water. That's my advice to you. The uh, 20953 uh, Gates had a better had much better reviews for uh, durability and construction. So that's what I'm going to replace the Subi hoses with. Now you see, this is that squishiness that I was talking about. If you can squish your hoses that much, that's pretty, that's pretty lax. So I'm leaving this on until I see where most of that coolant is gonna be going. I'm setting this all up down here to, min to minimize uh, uh, how much spray and splatter and spittle we're going to be having coming out of the radiator. That's the petcock that we were looking at from up above, right there. And I'd really like to try and get that turned and open from up above, but it's a long reach. I just don't want antifreeze running down my arm, which it's going to anyway, which reminds me, I probably ought to put my nitro gloves on. What's gonna happen is you're going to go to turn that little knob down there, and it is going to sort of spray out that little nipple that is there, it's a, it's a drain valve. And when that happens, that's just going to pour all over the place. It looks like it's mostly going to go right down through that hole here. Okay. But there's no telling. It's going to splatter, splatter everywhere. You need, you need to get a twist. You want to put a twist into that hose somehow so that it breaks because it's sealed by heat and uh, uh, friction and compression and everything to this portion of the radiator and you'll run into that when you start dealing with the uh, the hoses where they're hooked up to the metal as it goes into the engine block itself but this one it took one twist and it came loose look at that that's just so nice this car was well taken care of had regular maintenance and such so uh, that petcock down there that we were talking about earlier was not a problem to uh, get the flow. It turned, it was a little stiff, but it turned enough and I'm just going to let it trickle out of there to keep the splash and the volume and the jet of the water coming out of here uh, down to a minimum as much as I can. Now, you can pick these up you can get them in a five pack or a 10 pack or you know any any number of things at your auto store um, even Wally world and stuff carries them but one of the and you do this because this material that we're getting rid of is hazardous material this is not good this will uh, kill children and pets we don't feel the wet when we've been doing the work down here and what happens is is that we get the urge to use this hand we think we protected this hand uh, from this stuff which we have but the antifreeze the coolant will be on your hand but you won't feel it because it doesn't feel wet and you may touch your eyes your face somebody else your dog your pet um, so don't do that have paper towels handy have some paper towels handy yeah I want you to see why I have such a big uh, basin down here to catch we have, we have 
this stream and we have this stream and as you can see they're at least a foot apart and that's just coolant that is hitting on the rails down here in various spots and getting caught up on the framework underneath the car there's not really a lot you can do about that we're going to be working on these two bolts here on the thermostat housing one right here and one directly above it right up in here it's a blind feel kind of a thing which just makes this one of the most hassle laden parts of uh, of this whole process getting up in there uh, we're looking at 10 millimeter bolt head and a short, a stubby um, extension. Gets us in there so that we can get the socket on. And good chance that it has never been broken apart before and so solid chance that you are uh, gonna have to bang a little bit on the handle to make it work we may also have a little bit of fusion going on between these two parts because in this joint here is where the thermostat sits and that thermostat has a rubber gasket as you remember it's got a rubber gasket and that will form to both of these surfaces because it's rubber and this gets hot there's going to be uh, coolant coming out of here when this separates from this when this separates from this and this shroud here there's just no way to get around it you're going to get coolant spilled down onto that so this is just like a nightmare not only are we looking at it spilling down all over the place but we can't even get to it and I know if we were at the dealer they would disconnect this and give it more room, but I'm not prepared with any replacement gaskets for any of those surfaces, so I just suffer through it this way. Okay, second bolt out. I don't know what it's gonna do. It shouldn't pour out a whole bunch of fluid because the thermostat should be holding it back. Uh, and that's the case. So just pry it back. You do not want to be putting any metal against these surfaces. It's aluminum and your screwdriver will scratch it. There we go. Mostly going right back there. And note the jiggle valve is up here on top. Aisin, A-I-S-I-N, uh, huge manufacturer for, uh, for J-Dam and stuff. Do not use metal of any kind when you're scraping out the surface area just to make sure that no gunk is in the way. This is aluminum. 
This is aluminum, and your screwdriver will scratch it. Your metal screwdriver will scratch it. Just some shop, a shop towel to uh, to check the that there's no part of this gasket. That's another thing you want to look for. You want to look on the old gasket if any parts of it are missing. If there are any chunks out of it or severe corrosion um, around here that's attached itself to it on either side because that'll tell you if you have a problem, if you're gonna have a problem putting it back together. Do not use metal on these. So, you can see that there was quite a bit of garbage in here. And I took a plastic uh, scraper. You should have a plastic scraper to get most of that off. And it wasn't a lot, but <clears throat> 16th of an inch, that's enough to cause a seat problem. So I just got some 600 grit on a flat surface. Make sure nothing's underneath it. And just did this to clean up the surface evenly because that's the issue that we're trying to remedy is having an uneven surface. This way we have an even mating surface when that goes up against the engine block. Of course, look in there, you can see. Uh, I'm gonna have to clean that out. Go ahead and spray that out. But I have some other stuff I need to clean even more so. This is where the hose connects. And that's a pretty big lump right there. Look at that. It uh, almost comes up even. It does, it comes up even to uh, the lip on this uh, portion of, of the spout. And there's some down in here. So I'm going to clean that out. This isn't a mating surface to speak of. Um, let's see. This is part of what people are talking about when they're talking about contaminants, water, what water does under heat and in chemical reaction to uh, aluminum or other metals. Uh, it's kind of like you get battery, you know, deposits of, of uh, battery acid and corrosion on, uh, on your battery terminals. So that's, that's a pretty good amount of stuff coming off. And I'm not gouging. Do not gouge. You still don't want to be compromising the surfaces so much. And here's the big one. Look at that big old chunk just came off. Little QD electronic cleaner to clean things out on this thermostat housing. And that, I'm good with that. That's going to go on. Oh, nice. It actually sits in there on its own. So that's cool. Snug down one a little bit, snug down another a little bit, all just going finger tight, finger tight. And when you get to that point where you're actually really tight and snugging it down, alternate. Do one then the other. This causes the, this causes the gasket to wiggle into place. So top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom or bottom top, bottom top, whatever suits. I'm going with putting it to the, uh, uh, the thermostat first. That's where I'm hooking the hose up and uh, then go to this second. Because this is much easier to access. Make sure that you get it on over the lip in the back okay you want to almost go at it with a little bit of an angle so that you know that the back is on and then you just wiggle it down and this is about the position that you want to be uh, for your hose clamp there is 
a quarter inch, third of an inch on this side. And right here is, is the lump. Right here is that rise on the pipe that this clamps around, that this clamps behind, around and behind. At this point, I've decided that I am not going to flush because uh, it was already drained out uh, 40,000 miles ago and all of the fluid looked good and there wasn't a ton of corrosion or grit or anything anywhere. So. Follow the directions on these things. Find the uh, Find the cap that correlates with this top. Find the spigot, the connector that correlates with that. Put this in place. This, this uh, uh, washer here goes against this portion of the lip, so it creates your seal. And turn it and close it all the way like you would your regular radiator cap. It needs to have that seal. So I've done my leak check, nothing's going on. Engine's cold, motor's not running. I'm just filling up the radiator. And that's about a half a gallon. You don't want to be directly over this watching it go down because it'll bubble up and the coolant will hit you in the face, hit you in the eyes. Uh, you don't want that happening. Stand back from it and pour slowly, cautiously, no big deal. Just pour. And now we have about one gallon of stuff, both mixture uh, and the coolant. in the radiator. And that means I'm going to put in my conditioner. Subaru cooling system conditioner. Shake the bottle first. I just learned that. Yes, sorry, Bob. Shake the bottle first. And I think I'll do a little bit of water too. Just to help. And we're just over, nice, we're just over uh, the one-third mark on the temperature gauge, just above, which is normal operating temperature. When you think they've got all the air bubbles out for now, you want to test drive it and that sort of a thing, uh, or if you want to get it off of the ramps and put it down on an angle so that it burps more easily up through this container, uh, uh, let this cool down. Remember, this is acting as a radiator cap. So this whole thing has to cool down uh, before you put the uh, radiator cap back on. 